What's good, YouTube fam? It's your boy Tony, aka Descendant of Chaos and Controversy. And, uh, okay, so this video is to, I guess, touch base upon the parallel argument to the uh, $15 minimum wage disagreement, I guess, I, I guess would be appropriate. And I say parallel because now you got to where in, in I guess, 23 states where they have already um, put it in prematurely to the uh, unemployment um, benefits because they said that um, there aren't enough job positions being filled. Now, when people say jobs, they don't specify what what the jobs are that they say, you know, have, you know, vacant positions, you know, and the, the, the misrepresentation or the misleading narrative to that. It's like, oh, yeah, there's jobs available. There's jobs available. You no, know, what you mean to say is that there's work available, but you're not being forthcoming and truthful about the types of jobs that are out there. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these people before the pandemic hit, you know, were working pretty decent jobs. And this has been thrown on the table of discussion. And then when the pandemic hit, those jobs basically like fell by the wayside you know they left they they didn't have the uh how should i say the the uh the capability of being open during the pandemic only certain jobs were considered essential you know what i'm saying so there was a lot of businesses that closed for the most part permanently you know, um, some people had to sell their businesses, you know, and it was unfortunate. You know, now, what they don't tell you is that these people who has lost their jobs was probably making a $20 or more, you know, um, had insurance benefits and stuff like that and probably had like good savings prior to the pandemic. When the pandemic hit and they had to go into survival mode, they had to go into their savings because they didn't know how long the pandemic was going to last, how long the businesses or, or the states were going to be shut down. And they had to dip into their savings, their retirement, in order to keep themselves afloat with paying the mortgage, the um, utilities, um, rent or whatever, um, putting food on the table. Um, paying the uh, car notes, insurance, and, st and, and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, they're saying, okay, now the states are opening them back up and, you know, we got these jobs. Now these jobs are what? That these people have available to them are, are, are starting at what? $11 an hour, $10 an hour, maybe even 12 Because we're not up to the $15, um, which I'm going to call a wage uh uh, uh, increase most jobs aren't aren't there yet but th this this is what is left over this is what's available and this is what i was trying to tell people that had these rebuttaled and condescending um remarks to to come at me when it came to how how they viewed um being against the uh 15 minimum wage hike um i said do you think a lot of these people who go to work want to work where they work at, but they have to accept and take what's available now? And, and, and then, and then now, now you're going to take it where people are, are probably going to do what they do best. Conveniently forget that there was a pandemic conveniently forget and disregard what the pandemic has done to a lot of these businesses. And then just, be ignorant about, well, you know, people just need to get up and go to work. That's fine and dandy, but they can't go back to what they were doing prior to the fucking pandemic. Now they got to take the leftover bullshit. 
they gotta take these little minimum wage scrap jobs and shit like that. Now, now, now it's like where they was probably working one job. Now they gotta probably work two jobs and pick up a, a third job if that. So that means there's no family time. There's no one there to um be there to uh monitor and take care of the kids. They probably have to leave their kids in the hands of some strangers and shit. And we already know what it's like when you leave kids in, in, in the company of strangers. Let alone have to pay these motherfuckers and cross the fingers that they ain't doing your kids some kind of way. I mean, these are factors that people don't consider. I mean, when you have these cut and dry arguments, like, and, and, and here's the thing that I don't get. Here's the thing that I really don't get that baffles the fuck out of me. You always got these people who be sitting in these high positions, these politicians, these lawmakers, these legislations, le legislators or whatever. And what does their salary consist of? 140 to 200 to maybe 300 K a year. So they're living the life of luxury. You know what I'm saying? They don't have to worry about shit. But they're making decisions that they see or deem fit when it comes to our livelihood. But what if we took away their livelihood? Oh, they would be marching to a different um tune, wouldn't they? They'd be playing a different note, wouldn't they? But being that no one is there to take from them, and this is and this is why I tell people all the time: Why are we so comfortable with allowing people? To dictate to us or make decisions to us like we are that fucking incompetent. Why? And no one argues against them. Instead, we argue amongst each other talking about where we find value in each other. Who, who should be deserving of what? But no one argues against these fucking politicians and shit. You maybe got a few that speak out and then that argument just <sighs> dies off. It's all forgotten. But what the decisions that they make impact and affect the American people. And it, I mean, and it's insulting to, to, to a person that probably once had their own business that they couldn't afford to keep open because of the pandemic. Um, was probably working a, a decent job under that person that owned their own business. But now they, what, what, they, what they have left with as an option to go to. Oh, now I got to go apply to Walmart. Now I got to go apply at a gas station. Now I got to go work at McDonald's or Dollar General. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, say if the job was conveniently, like, within walking distance. Because a lot of these places don't have transportation. Let, let's be fair now. A lot of people who can't afford transportation or, or, or to, to have their own vehicle. Or whatever the case may be. And some of these areas aren't built like Houston. Like Houston, like if we had a, a, and that's what I don't get too. Like you got all these states that claim that they broke, but they generate all this revenue. I'm taking Illinois, for example. You got toll roads. You got, you got a lot of people that, that's giving money based off of citations. When you get pulled over by the police. When you have to go to court for whatever, all that money's going into the judicial system and all of that. But they claim that all these cities or, or, or states are, 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 are falling behind financially, but they're the ones who's sucking the most money out of the people. Or high taxes and everything else like that. But yeah, you take a place, a place like Houston that don't have state tax, only has federal tax. And they got more shit going on for in, in that in that city. They got the metro bus system, the metro rail. You know what I'm saying? You know that that take people to one side of town to another side of town to all these different wards and stuff like that. You know, um, and you just have to learn the, the regular bus schedule or whatever. And I mean, I mean, it's crazy. And, and, okay, I understand, yeah, you got the Reliant Stadium where they have, like, the Texans and stuff like that. And you got the rodeo 
and then you got like the Toyota Center, the Minute Maid Park. Um, they built not too long ago before I left a new soccer stadium. Um, you got like a lot of artists that live there. I mean, you got a lot, a lot of stuff that brings in a lot of revenue. I get that. I get that. But you know what? Some of these states can generate the same type of stuff. You know? Uh, but, I, I mean, I don't get it. I mean, I really don't get it. And, and I don't understand how people argue against people that, that when they know that, you know, what, what they ha once had is no longer there, you're going to sit there and tell them what, what their worth is, what, what, what they think they should get paid. You know what I'm saying? Like, how the fuck, how the fuck can you have the audacity, like, to just sit on your fucking high horse and, and just, like, look down on people and tell them what you think? You know, it's like, it, it, and, 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 and people are comfortable with putting these motherfuckers in a position to tell you what the fuck to do. And they're sitting pretty. They don't have shit to worry the fuck about. They go in for a couple of hours and shit, um, have little bullshit debates and arguments and stuff and talk about what bill or legislation should get passed or how much money should go into this and how much money should go into that and then at the end of the day they're done they're going home whatever and then they sit there and laugh at our expense talking about oh pfft, these motherfuckers and if you're republican or democrat and, and who who deserves what who don't deserve what what group of people should be awarded this what group of people should be left out you know and they think only of themselves, like I said, like I said before. These people do not represent us. We represent them. It's time we stop representing motherfuckers that don't represent us. And we take a stand and matters into our own fucking hands. Instead of fucking bitching about this whole racial divide, fucking the critical race theory bullshit and stuff like that, because is that fucking solving the job issue? No. Is that putting fucking food on the table? No. But you rather sit there and fucking bitch about critical race theory and what you think should and shouldn't be fucking taught. Meanwhile, motherfuckers are trying to figure out how to fucking put food on the table for their fucking family. Trying to figure out how to pay bills while these stupid fucking lawmakers are bitching about fucking trivial fucking arguments and shit. Oh, we don't think that there should be a critical race theory. Oh, we think there should be a critical race theory. How's that relevant to the fucking standard of living in this fucking country? You're wasting time arguing about fucking petty and shit. When there are real fucking issues to be addressed, to be fucking attacked, to be solved, but that's pushed on the back burner. Because, Lord forbid, if we reach into the pockets of these politicians and take from them, but it's nothing for them to take from us. But we are complacent for, with that. Instead, we're sitting here bickering and bitching amongst the PTAs. And, yeah, well, you know, I don't think we should be reminded of racism. I don't think that they should teach this in our classrooms. Oh, I'm highly offended about the reverse racism. You should be highly offended that you can't fucking provide for your fucking family because these motherfuckers that you put in a position to fucking control your fucking ass, those are the ones you should be bitching to instead of fucking wasting and exhausting your fucking effort on stupid shit. But, like they say, we pick and choose our battles, don't we? We entertain unnecessary drama, don't we? I'm just saying. Anyway, until next time, until next video, give me your thoughts on this fucking matter. <sighs> you already know how I go. Peace.